just oh. I want some names. What's your names? I don't have the names. Where is the car? Where is the drug? Where is the money? Alright, fine, I'll tell you. Just don't do anything to me. You were supposed to be the local snitch. I'm not supposed to pay you anything for information. Hey, anyone's got 20p? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even give it to him. <laughs> 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 hey, stop looking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you never mean it's everybody by the police? Yeah. Yeah. They are licensed money, you know, when you know there's a lot of money. Yeah, okay. As soon as they close the door, this is what you get, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then they take your, uh, you know, the, the police ordinance of telephone and everything. What is the, the yeah. And they smash your head with it. Yeah, until you give names. Yeah, yeah. until you give names. Yeah, but what names do you want? Yeah, pick uh, any name from your book. Yeah, one billion names. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, guys. Okay, remember. Uh, okay, hold on. We just uh, gonna go through uh, just uh, questioning you again, uh, uh, the same way we we did. Yeah. So, uh, okay, let's do this. Okay, hi. I'm going to ask you a few questions and I need you to answer the best way possible. So the question number one will be about what would be uh, the risk factor involved with the use of physical intervention. So we understand that physical intervention can be very dangerous, right? Uh, Very tricky, very risky. But could you explain or give us more explanation why we should think twice uh, before using physical intervention? Uh, physical intervention is first and foremost for mental health. Yeah. Um, that's just myself, the company included, and uh, people surrounding me, which is my team as well. Um, it could lead to uh, physical injury, yes. um, even death, worst case scenario, um, mental uh, disturbances that could just be definitely and such. Um, yeah. Uh, there is so many uh, risks involved, so many. Uh, Unknown in this equation when we decide to to go physical. Mm. So this is the reason why we always use this option as the last resort. As the last resort, of course, of course, as the last resort. Uh, let's talk about uh, what would be the best uh, the best way to uh, conduct a physical intervention on the ground. What would be the best practice? What what would be the protocol? What would be the best advice? Uh, the best thing to do is first. You will gravitate to that. You will push it into definitely, um, which will have a duty of care of the the person on the ground, as himself and the team, and then the ground. Um, He would uh, again do some communication, communication, uh, make sure um, he was breathing properly. There are no signs of uh, muscular dysphoria. Yes, and um, yeah, just make sure that your dignity is also in check as well. We seem to sometimes to forget, and it's a very good point. Yeah. Dignity, dignity. Mm. When we when we conduct a, a citizen arrest, mm. let's say, yeah, and we decide to become physical, and we use the section three. So we use the section three, and we put someone under arrest. That means that person cannot go anywhere. That person sees his movement restricted. See, is this right restricted? Is human rights. Is human rights restricted? That means that instead of enjoying 14 human rights, he is now enjoying only 13. But you mentioned something really important here, dignity. We may have removed one of this person's human rights, freedom of movement, because this person has committed an indictable offense, and he must have his day in court. So we have to make sure that he's not running away. We put him under arrest, yes. But while we're doing this, he still has among his human rights, uh, 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 the right to be treated with respect and dignity. So we are not going to uh, try to attend to also remove the, this, uh, this right, the right to be treated with respect and dignity, despite uh, having uh, restricted his freedom and his freedom of movement. So I think this is a very, very important point. Uh, And yes, you mentioned that the team leader must 
uh, run the show. He's not involved with the with what's going on physically, but he keep dialogue and communication, trying to get inside the customer's or that individual's mind to defuse the situation, to make him give up. He's going to talk to him in a way that we we'll try to make him understand we are not here to hurt you. And we understand that what is going on is uncomfortable. But we will ask you kindly to stop resisting. Stop now. Then we let go. Then we will stop our physical intervention on you. The police has been called. They will be here at any time now. Just sit, chill, and then explain your case <coughs> with the, uh, the, 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 law, the, the, the the law enforcement officer. And when we have your saying in court, uh, ah, best of luck. Yeah. So yes, it's a very important uh, point uh, that you mentioned. And another one was about the positional asphyxia. And we understand that positional asphyxia is really it's possible. If we don't pay attention, we don't know what we're doing, positional asphyxia is, will be like a Damocles sword above our head, ready to strike at any time. We saw it before, we saw it with George Floyd's case. Uh, George Floyd, by the way, uh, six feet uh, two, three, like this, yeah. And the police knew him. The police knew him and the police were a bit worried as well because he represented a serious threat, physical threat. So they did what they had to do. They saw the threat, they matched the force up to it, we could. They controlled the threats. The threat is not a threat no more. But the use of force was still there when the use of force was supposed to reduce, decrease with the threat. With the decrease of the threat, you are supposed to have the decrease of the use of force. But instead of that, they kept, they kept it here for nine minutes. And we all remember what happened. We all remember the scream and that famous uh, thing, I cannot breathe. So positional asphyxia, is when we apply force on someone. It could be on the ground, but it could be also against the wall. It could be also standing up against the wall. Bottom line, we apply force and we squeeze him so much that he can't, he can't what? He can't breathe. And then, just remember like this snake, giant snake, uh, South America, or even in Asia, yeah, the constructor, and their characteristic. They will let you breathe. And then, when you expire, squeeze. And then you will struggle. They let you squeeze again. Squeeze again. Same thing, same thing. Positional asphyxia will squeeze you like this and you can't breathe. No air goes to the brain. And we have a situation. George Floyd died from brain damage, but if you are lucky, you might not die, but the part of your brain will be finished forever. 